Okay, so the second skill we're going to do is looking at gaps, either gaps in the table or gaps on a histogram. So first thing to note here is we haven't been given the true class limit. So I've said, note that the gaps affect the class width. So first thing I'm going to do is quickly just translate these. So this one's going to be going to from 0.5 to 2.5. This one's going to be going from 2.5 to 6.5. And this one's going to be going from 6.5 to 9.5. And actually, you can kind of see that on here, that the first bar is 0.5 to 2.5 here. Now, for simplicity, we can set the scaling between the area and the frequency to be 1. So sometimes you might not be given the numbers here, but you can set the numbers so that that k value is just going to be 1, meaning that there's a direct comparison. The second thing that I've written up here is remember that the frequency density axis is only correct to scale, so there may be some scaling, it's kind of what I was just talking about. However, in an exam, the scaling is unlikely to be required for the frequency density if the frequency density scale is already given, or if it's blank, you can set it in such a way so that it's the area is directly proportional to the frequency. That might make sense a bit more in the next example that we have a look at because it's got a blank bit that we've got here. So the class width that we've got for this top group is between 2.5 and 0 0.5, which is 2. Whereas when you look at the class width here, you'd probably think it's 1, because 2 take away 1 is 1, but actually it's between 2.5 and 0 0.5, so the class width is 2. The class width for the next group is 4, and for the last group is 3. And you can also see that on the diagram, that this has got a width of 2, this has got a width of 4, and this has got a width of 3. So to find the frequency density, or even to kind of think about what the um, the bar is that we've got here, we could see that the area of this bar needs to be proportional to the frequency. So that's why I've put 2 and 1 here, so that the, um, the size of this bar is 2 times 2, which is 4. So that's kind of just worked out nicely. So the frequency density would have been 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So for this next one, we've got that the, the uh, frequency is 3 and the width is 4. So because the area is just going to be directly proportional, if it's 4 along here, I just need to do the 3 divided by 4 to find out the height of the bar. So 3 divided by 4 is 0 0.75. So I'm just going to draw this onto the diagram at this point here. So this is this bit now completed. And then if we're going to try and find out the frequency, because the bars have got a direct scaling, we can see that it's 3 across and 1 up. 3 times 1 is just going to be 3. So the frequency density is 1, and we're multiplying them to get that the frequency here is 3. So it's all about kind of proportion a different um, for histograms, and it's just thinking really carefully about how area is going to represent something that's proportional to the frequency. Now, in this next question, we don't have the scale of the frequency di uh, density. So I think this might um, maybe explain anything that possibly was a bit confusing in that earlier explanation. It says here that the partially completed histogram and the partially completed table show the time to the nearest minute that a random sample of motorists were delayed by roadworks on a stretch of the motorway. And it wants us to estimate the percentage of these motorists who were delayed by the roadworks for between 8.5 and 13.5 minutes. So what we should do is find one of the bars where we have uh, the actual bar drawn for it and we have a frequency. So we could have a look at this 10, to, we can't have a look at the 10 to 12 group. Um, I guess we could have a look at the 13 to 15 group because the 13 to 15 group just goes up to nine. So we could use that. And also the four to six group, we've also got some information about. So we can actually find out what the that scaling is going to be. We would like it to just be that the area is equal to the frequency. In other words, the scaling constant is one. So I'm going to just zoom in and just have a quick look at this beginning bit that we've got here. So this true limit actually going from 3.5 to 6.5. So the class width there is 3. And we want the area of that bar to be 6 so that they have a direct comparison. So we've got that the class width is 3. And I want the area to be 6. So I'm actually going to set the um, the height of that bar as 2. So the frequency density is just going to be the frequency divided by 3, 6 divided by 3, 
which is 2 for the frequency density. And now we've got a direct comparison. So if I just put these other values on the side here, I only need to go up to 8. We can now figure out all of the areas for the other bits. So this gap along the bottom is 2, and it's going up to 7. 2 times 7 is 14. So we know for this bit that the number of motorists is going to be 14. Now, we've got that the number of motorists needs to be 17 for 9. That's actually going to be going between 8.5 and 9.5, so it's got a class width of 1. So I want it to just be going all the way up to 17. Well, that means I'm going to have to make my axes go a little bit higher. 14, 16, 18, 20. So let's draw that going all the way up to 17 between 9.5 uh, sorry, 8.5 and 9.5. I have very shaky hands. Not bad. Okay. A little bit wonky at the top, but you get what I'm trying to do here. So that's going to be my bar for the 9 section. Between 10 and 12 is 45. So that's actually going to be between 9.5 and 12.5 so the class width is 3 and we can see that on the diagram here and I want it to represent 45 so I want the area to be 45 45 divided by 3 is 15 so I want this bit to be going all the way up to 15 so here is 15 again it's a little bit wonky but you get the idea of what I'm trying to do for that bit of the histogram Probably didn't need to do all of that, but I quite liked filling some of this in. And then between 16 and 20, we can just actually work out the area for this. So it's one, two, three, four, it's five along the bottom, and it's one up. So five times one is just five that we've got here. So it wants us to estimate the percentage of these motorists who were delayed by the roadworks for between 8.5 and 13.5 minutes. So 8.5 and 13.5 minutes. 8.5 is going to be here, and 13.5 is going to be, that's 12.5, is going to be here. So we're going to need to work out what those areas are that we've got. In fact, we can just work out their um, yeah, areas and frequencies are the same thing. So um, let's find out how many of them are between 8.5 and 13.5. Well, we've got this first bar, which is 1 along the bottom and 17 high. In other words, it is 17. And the next bit is going to be a 45. So we've got a 17 and a 45. And then for this bar that we've got here, the whole thing along the bottom is 3. And we want it just to be one bar of this. So it's going to be a third of this frequency that we've got. And that frequency is nine. So a third of nine is three. So we've got 17, 45, and three. That's 65. So we've got 65 motorists who are between 8.5 and 13.5 minutes. We now just need to find out how many motorists, motorists there are in total. So that is going to be six plus 14, plus 17, plus 45, plus 9, plus 5. That's 96. So the percentage, the percentage between 8.5 and 13.5 is going to be the what that amount that we think there are, which is 65, out of the total multiplied by 100. So that's 65 out of 96 multiplied by 100, which is 67.7%. 67.7%. Let's see if we've got this right by having a look in the mark scheme here. So there are some different ways of doing this, but here they are of working out how many of them were above um, in that gap, which was 65 that we had here. Um, I'm not sure what this bit's referring to, the 14 and the 5, but we've got the, oh, the 14 and the 5 was for figuring out these extra values that we've got here, 14 and 5. 
and then finding out the percentage. So we did 65 out of 96 multiplied by 100 to get the percentage of 67.7. Now you may not have needed to actually even draw these bars that we've got here, um, but I kind of wanted to do it for the completion sake in case they had asked you to actually draw the whole thing as well. So in this case, the area was directly proportional to the frequency. Um, so I was thinking about widths and heights of the bars to try and get this table filled in and to try and solve this problem here. Okay.